This is a level two sample paper from City and Girls, part A. Again, for this part, you can't use a calculator, they are total. In question number one, we've got to divide 672 by 21. So how many 21s fit into 67? Let's have a look. 21 and 21 makes 42. If I add another 21, that gives me 63. So that is very close to 67, so I can't fit another 21. So there are three lots of 20 to 67. And that means I've got four remaining. 67 take away 63 gives us four. Now how many 21s fit into four to two? That is exactly two lots of them. So the answer is 32. In the second question, we've got what is 0 0.825 as a, a percentage? So as a percentage, we go two spaces to the right. So multiplying this by 100 in other words. So that would be 82.5. The diagram shows a cross section of a metal bar. Which one of the following is the side elevation? So this one here. Right, so it is not A, not B, not D. So it's got to be C, looking at the direction of it, like horizontal bars. So we'll write C here. We've got to work out square root of 15 take away 6 all over 3. So we've got to apply a bit mass in here. We don't have a bracket, but we have sort of indices. We've got square root, which we need to do first. So within the square root, we've got 15 take away 6, which is 9. So square root of 9 divided by 3. Square root of 9 is actually 3, so 3 over 3, which gives us 1. Question number 5. A box of chocolates contains 4 hard centres, 6 soft centres and 2 plain chocolates. A woman chooses a chocolate at random. What's the probability that she takes either a hard centre or a a soft center. Give your answer as a fraction in its lowest terms. Okay, so looking at them in turn, a heart center, the probability of picking a heart center is 4 out of 4 and 6 and 2, which makes 12. 4 out of 12, which is 1 third. And the probability of taking a soft center is 6 out of 12, which is half. Now when it says or, this or that, it means that you've got more chances. You could have hard center or soft center. So that increases the probability and so because you don't mind whether it's hard or the soft center. So that means we're going to add the one third and the half. 
giving these a common denominator of 6. So that is 1 third is equal to 2 sixth and half is equal to 3 sixths. So that makes 5 sixths. So we've got a conversion graph for gallons in litres. What is 6 gallons in litres to the nearest litre? So going to gallons, 6 gallons. So going up. Right, so that is between 25 and 30. That is 27. So we'll write here 27 litres. What is 42% of 400? So um, we know that 10% of 400 is equal to 40. So 40% will be four lots of it. So four times 40, which is 160. Now 1% 1 of 400 is equal to four. So 400 divided by 100 gives us four. 2% will be 2 lots of it, which is 8. So 40% and 2% makes 42%. So that is 160 and 8, which gives us 168. An inspector checks the weights of bags of crisps. We've got a number of values. The question is, what's the modal weight of the bags of crisps? So modal means the most common value. So having a look at the values that would be themselves. So 24.4, that is repeated again here. And we've got it here as well. 25.5 is also repeated, so we've got it here as well, here, here, and there. The rest of the values are not repeated, so that means that 25.5 is the mode of value because it's repeated one, two, three, four, five times, whereas 24.4 is repeated only three times. So we'll write it here as 25.5 grams. Question number nine, 18.369 plus 3.197, take away 2.475 equals what? So we'll break this down into parts, We'll do the addition first and then the subtraction. So 18.369 add 3 point. So the point, the decimal point is under the decimal point. 197. 9 and 7 is 16. So 6 down and 1 carried over. 9 and 1 is 10, and the 6 is 16. So we carry 1 over. We've got 3 and 1, 4 and 1, 5. 8 and 3 is 11. 1 and 1 is 2. Now we're going to take away the 2.475 from that.
So six take away five gives us one. I need to do six take away seven. So I'm gonna borrow one from the five to make this 16. Take away seven gives me nine. So I'm left with four here. Four take away four gives me zero. One take away two. I'm going to have to borrow one to make it 11. I say borrow one, but it really means borrowing 10. So 11 take away two gives me nine. One take away zero is one. So 19.091. Question 10. What's the value of angle A? We know this one here is 90 degrees. And we also know that full circle is equal to 360 degrees. So we know that we've got four angles and we know the value of three of them. So we've got 90, 105, and 25. Five and five is 10, one and nine, 10, and the two, 12. So 220 we've got, and there needs to be 360 in total. So take away 220, 140 degrees. So angle A is equal to 140 degrees. Eight bricklayers on a building site took 25 hours to build a wall. The site manager needs a similar wall built. He can hire five bricklayers to build this wall. He needs to know how much longer it will take to build this wall. How much longer will it take? So let's write the ratio first. So it takes eight bricklayers, 25 hours. What about five bricklayers? So we know that it's going to take them longer. And this is what we call inverse proportion. So we're reducing the number of bricklayers, but we're increasing the number of hours. So we expect there to be more hours than 25. What I'm going to do to help you through this is to show you an example with direct proportion. So let's suppose to make one cake, you need three eggs. To make two cakes, you need six eggs. So as you can see, they grow in proportion. Double the number of cakes and the number of eggs doubles. But also there is another relationship. Looking at this one, to get from one to three, you multiply by three. And to get from two to six, you multiply by three. So you multiply by the same number. When it comes to inverse proportion, that happens across. So to get from five to 25, you multiply by five, and you're gonna do the same thing with the eight. So eight, times 5 is going to give you 40. So it takes 5 big layers 40 hours. The question is how much longer? So in comparison to the 25 hours. So 40 take away 25 gives us 15 hours. So 15 hours longer. A woman needs to work out how long it will take to drive to York. She checks the journey on the website distance from her house to York is 80 miles. 20 miles of the journey are through roadworks and the speed restriction of 40 miles per hour. She should drive the rest of the journey at an average speed of 50 miles per hour. How long should the journey take? Sure you're working. So we're talking about speed here and the first thing to do is the to write the speed formula. 
And if you don't remember that, it's fine because the way we write speed normally is something like 60 miles per hour. So that tells you what's the formula. Speed is miles is about distance and hours tell us about time. So now we've got two different speed here. So we'll break the journey into two parts. The 20 miles, the first 20 miles, and then 60 miles to make 80. So for the first 20 miles, she travels at a speed of 40 miles per hour. So if we rewrite this as speed equals d over t, so speed is 40 equal to distance, which is 20 miles, and time, we don't know what that is equal to. Now you could use a triangle here if you like to get what t is equal to, and it is 20 over 40. So if you ever forget that, or you don't know about triangles, just write something similar to that, but with numbers that you know. So similar to this, I'd write 2 equals 6 divided by 3. So if I didn't know the value of 3, that would be equal to 6 divided by 2. So that top number divided by this one on the left. So in this case, t is equal to 20 divided by 40, which gives us 0 0.5 hours or 30 minutes. Now for the rest of the journey, we've got a speed of 50 miles per hour, and that is 60 miles distance over time. So repeat the process, t is equal to 60 over 50, which is the same as 6 over 5, which is 1.2 hours. The format we need to write this in is hours and minutes. So in total we have 1.2 and 0 0.5 to give us 1.7 hours. So we know it's taken one hour. In terms of minutes, so 0 0.7 of an hour, what is that equal to in terms of minutes? You could just multiply it by 60 and get the answer straight away. Or you could break it down into 0 0.1. So what is 10% of an hour, 10% of 60 minute, minutes? Um, and that is six minutes, so 60 divided by 10. And seven lots of this to get 0 0.7 will be 42. So one hour and 42 minutes. And also this would give you 42. So whichever you find easiest to use.